Coal ash is what's left over when you burn coal. Once it's burned and created, it's then kind of put into a slurry and piped into unlined ponds, and there it has sat at the Sutton site for almost six decades. But it's very toxic. It has a lot of heavy metals in it, uh, like arsenic and chromium, vanadium, manganese, selenium, boron, just kind of a long list of, of toxins. The Cape Fear River overtopped the earthen berm around Sutton Lake. What we're seeing in the river here, we're on the main stem of the Cape Fear River, just downstream of the most significant breach in the cooling pond. And we're actually seeing some of the coal ash that's floating on top of the water in uh, the side of the river in, in some of the wetland areas that where, where there's not as much current. The level of Sutton Lake rose, and as it rose, it inundated active coal ash ponds on the site. The coal ash from those ponds then was pulled out into Sutton Lake. The berms at the lower section of the lake, the southern section of the lake, failed, and that water began to flow out of Sutton Lake over those berms and through the breaches in those berms into the Cape Fear River, pulling that coal ash with it. The Cape Fear River and Sutton Lake and those coal ash ponds were all one body of water. I think this is a very significant spill. There were numerous breaches that have all contributed to this. During the storm itself and the rainfall, the coal ash landfill that Duke has been building for the past couple of years actually failed. And so there were a number of breaches at the landfill itself. We're trying to understand exactly what happened. We've taken samples, we're gonna have those samples analyzed. We've taken a lot of photographs and video. We're trying to make sure that this incident isn't brushed under the rug, which is what Duke has traditionally tried to do in these situations. So this is just one long, you know, 800 foot breach. There are several more all lining the pond. Anytime you introduce kind of a plug of heavy metals into an ecosystem, you can start to expect to see those toxic heavy metals work their way up the food chain and, and eventually work their way onto somebody's dinner plate. Climate change is changing the way hurricanes impact the East Coast. I've lived here my entire life. I've lived through a lot of hurricanes, but Matthew was very different than most of them, and Florence was much more like Matthew. There were still Matthew recovery efforts that were far from finished when Florence hit.